Okay. So there okay. are still some that yeah. are open. Okay. And the second batch that the town attorney is in reference to are the ones that we just right. filed. Just commenced. Yes. All right. How many are those? You authorized right. me in, in July. Right. Uh, that's 34 parcels. And we have commenced that action. Uh, the redemption date is December 31, 2010. And some people have already paid. Uh, Sorry, so we yes, have 30. Are those 34 actions on this sheet, Mr. Um, Burns? Yeah, that would be part of the, the 298,000 as well as 31st. So wait, we have 188,000 still in dispute. Is that the last year's in REMS that we haven't finally collected? Yeah, on? those are the final ones that okay. should be wiped out very shortly. Down Fine. to nothing. Gotcha. And so we have 34 properties for $298,000 this no, year. I think it's more Jesus. than that, isn't it? Yeah. It's more than that, I think. Well, we got 298 here. It was right? One paid today. Oh. One, one did pay today. So oh. they are coming in. So we got 34 properties that, that are we've in initiated. Mm -hmm. We initiated the action, and of those, 20 are town and country, I think. 25. 25 are town and country. Yeah. So we, we anticipate a pretty high rate of payment on those. Um, but yes, we, we they have till the end of the year to make full payment, or they. How was that established? The law requires publication for three consecutive months before the rate, between filing the action, which was in August, and the date of redemption, which is at the end of the three months. So I gave them three months. So. Okay, so then uh, at the end of those three months, what happens? If they don't pay, they lose the house in foreclosure or the building or the property. Okay. Well, can we, uh, maybe uh, Councilman Gell from Queenstown, last year we had a lot of sort of you know, we take possession of the property, and then we had, you know, we had to make decisions on an ad hoc basis. Can we stop? Would you mind uh, proposing the policy for once we foreclose, either, you know, it's done and dusted, or we'll give them 30 days at some fee uh, you know, to, to present to the board for the next meeting? Would you mind terribly? No, not at all. Perhaps I could talk with Chairman yeah. Nodal about that. Because, look, uh, we should establish the policy, and the people should know, and Again, I, I know you've, you really should do your own reality TV show with, with the excuses and, and, and comments you get. Um, and I was just, you know, we were all surprised last time with the people that, you know, were out of touch, not contacted, that kind of thing. Um, do, do we have any sense of how many of the 34 properties received notice that I, I am uh, we serve them all by certified mail. Uh, we don't get have to get the receipts. It's published. They got regular mail packages, so. All right, but look, I want to. I want to. I want to look. The, the goal is not to take back these properties. Okay, the goal is to make those homeowners that don't know that they owe the taxes know. I mean, the, we have this horrifically unfortunate situation where one of the gentlemen last year had to buy his house twice. Yeah, and it was just just silly. Uh, so what I want, Mr. Mecca, would you take those 34 properties mm -hmm. and call them up? Mm -hmm. We need to we'll do everything in our power to find phone numbers and call them up and leave a message. Well, we're gonna, we'll, yeah. If you want, we can do the visit again. Well, I think we'll, we'll get it down well, we don't need to as do we get yeah, closer. You can't visit yet. You, we don't know yet. yet no. so we yeah, don't, we but as we get closer, <laughs> but I think yeah. you're absolutely right, Deb. Right. As we get closer, you know, we want to give everybody an opportunity. But I think, knowing Councilman Galfar, once those properties are ours, they're ours this time around. I mean, if they, they haven't figured it out this time, yeah. it's, it's, there's well, not going to be I as much... As much, uh, I think, uh, cat understanding. Mouse, cat and mouse back and forth was, right. not, was not good for anybody. Right. Exactly. Was it we're going to have to establish a policy and just adhere to it, and that's it. Okay. So, but if you, I appreciate it if you could. Uh, you yes, know, we will. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. One other point while I'm up here is the other hat I wear elections. Okay. Next uh, Wednesday. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on Dave. I'm sorry. I have, I have a couple more questions for you. No. Oh. All right. Yeah. Next Wednesday, we will have once again. A display here, a live display from 7 to 9, presented by the Board of Elections, if anyone is interested. They, all machines were used this past time out. You've, you've read a lot and heard a lot, I'm sure. But I, I would like to, I mean, I'm like 19, 20 years now in elections, and primary is always a problem because of the multiple parties. And, and people have complained about it, but in the other old system, if the worker did not move the lever, well, that party line did not activate. And they would go in there and say, I can't vote on the Democratic line, it's not working. But that's because the 
inspector didn't set it on the democratic line. So there were many issues in the old machines also on primary day. Hopefully election day, we won't have them. We'll, we'll, things will be much more simplified. There is no moving. It's just one party or the other. There's also some other things that we will address with the inspectors uh, that they must be a little more attentive to the voter because that ballot can be put in any direction whatsoever. If it's upside down, no one can read it, but the machine can. So there's some fine-tuning that still has to be done. But basically, I think all in all, they ran very smoothly and everything went very nicely. So again, two, next Wednesday, we will be here, 7 to 9. The public is welcome. Anyone is welcome to come, see it in operation, do a test vote so you get a little feel of just how the machine works, okay? Excuse me, uh, Nick, the old manual machines? They're sitting in the garage. We've, uh, Cope and I have sent a letter to the Board of Elections for some direction on what to do with them. We haven't heard back yet. <laughs> the only thing I have been told is that the school districts have been granted a two-year waiver so they can use those machines for two more years. Okay. But what does that do as far as the storage and maintenance and repairs or whatever? We'll so send the county a bill. Well, it's going to have to be done. If they're not going to do anything with them, we'll have to at least a storage bill. Yeah, so absolutely. We will, we will follow that up and, and let you know just where we stand. So, Okay, any questions? Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is something within your purview, but certainly I noticed it myself. I felt it, and I read a lot about it in the media. A lot of people had a, had a beef with the, with the lack of privacy of the ballots. Yeah. That the inspectors you know, physically put the ballots in the machines, and, and it was really out there for anyone to see. Is there anything that can be done about that? The, when the person fills out the ballot, they receive a sleeve. They're supposed to put it in the sleeve, bring it over to the machine, and as I said, the ballot can put, be put upside down. It does not have to be face side up. So no one can read who you voted Why for. Why then? It seemed, though, that the inspectors were the ones who were putting them in the machines. Well... <laughs> Training, shall we say? A the inspector, the Board of Elections is aware that uh, more training must be uh, provided for the inspectors. And I, I may, I'm going to see what happens in the next few weeks, call all our people that worked as chair people to come for a refresher course. To come in and we'll sit down with them and go through it. Who will actually supervise the election? The Board of Elections. County. We're only, uh, you're county. We're only uh, intermediate, right. that's all. So we don't even deliver anymore. They deliver the machines and they deliver the bags all themselves. That was, we had all kinds of problems. The stuff was locked up where no one knew. But hopefully we'll get that all ironed out. But the privacy was an issue that will be addressed. So, okay? Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Mr. Mecca, thank you. Uh, sorry, Mr. Uh, Burns, I just wanted to, um, on your receivable sheet, mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to compare how we're doing this year against last year. Um, so the, so, uh, you know, with all our in REM last year, we were at 3.9, now we're at 3.8, so a bit of improvement, but not much. And I guess the question I'm trying to figure out is, how do I compare... You know, so the liens outstanding has been dramatically reduced as a result of our NREM efforts, I take it. Um, so how do I compare the outstanding generated for this year versus last year? Well, the, to <clears throat> the total receivables are, are about flat from, from year to year because the levy is increasing. So, I mean, it, we, we did, uh, with, with the NREM process that, that uh, Paul worked on with Nick and myself, uh, we did collect a lot of money, and, and you know, interest and penalties is down from year to year about a hundred thousand, and um, the lien collections for you know, it's about seven hundred thousand less than last year. So, if we didn't do that one-time shot of of the REM collections, our receivables would have been, you know, probably about a million dollars higher. So, but. Uh, well, I guess so what you're saying, I need. So, could you just provide us with the percentage then? Because what you're okay. saying, right? I can. The, I can. Do the percent. That. So we'd see a more dramatic, mark change in the percentage of receivables outstanding. Yeah. So what's what happening saying. too is, is the current receivables that are not in rem. You know, the, that are right. current or one year are increasing slightly. That's what I'm trying to get a sense of. I understand. 
So we, I can provide that information. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mecca. Thanks, Mr. Burns. Thank you.